everybody. It is uh, the first week of August and I wanted to film a little reading vlog while on vacation in Whistler, BC. I came up here with my family for a getaway and uh, it's really warm and sunny and uh, luckily uh, we're not having a huge amount of uh, smoke from the forest fires right now which is really great because there are forest fires all over the province um, and so I wanted to just share with you what I am reading for this week while we are here. I have been reading A Brief History of Seven Killings by Marlon James and I finished this this morning. So I started this I can't remember when in July. It was a July read. It took a really long time because it's over 600 pages and um, it uh, was a great read and I'm really glad that I've read this and I'm going to share more thoughts on this in my monthly wrap up and in my five star predictions um, wrap up because this was part of my five star predictions for the African diaspora. And um, I'll just say briefly that if you're looking for something that's really engrossing and um, kind of takes over your world a bit, I think this is definitely one of those books. So uh, like I said, I will share more about this in future videos, but uh, know that I finished this this morning. Okay, so the other July read that I'm wrapping up uh, this week is The Land We Are. This is a compilation of essays and this book uh, covers uh, artists who are examining the relationship um, around reconciliation in both Canada and the US, mostly Canada though, and this is both Indigenous and non-Indigenous artists and some different projects and art projects that they've ran um, and both through writing and essay form and through visual art. So um, I am about just a little bit over halfway in this one and um, hope to wrap it up this week and I think it's got a lot of food for thought in it which is exactly why I wanted to read it so I do recommend this one. And the other book I want to read in this vlog is Cockroaches by Scholastic Mukasanga and this is a memoir set in Rwanda and um, I'm also reading this for my five star predictions. So I think this is book four and I will only have one book left on that list to complete after this one. So you can expect a video on that one pretty soon. So enjoy the Whistler footage and I will check in again about the books when I have a bit more to say about them. Yeah.
Hey everyone. So this has been a bit of a all over the place reading vlog. I certainly think it's a bit more of a travel vlog than a reading vlog, but I'm gonna combine them, I think. Um, I just finished Cockroaches by Scholastique Mukasanga, and um, wow, this is a very powerful little volume. Uh, which I, of course, knew it would be um, anytime anyone's writing about something as serious and as heart-wrenching and as devastating as a genocide, you know that it's going to be a very intense experience. But what Mukasanga can do with her writing is create... Um, it, it's a very poignant description, but there's not anything very superfluous here. Um, it's very much a tribute to the people and the places that she knew when she lived in Rwanda during the regime, the Hutu regime, which um, kept Tutsis um, oppressed through her whole childhood, really. Um, there were many amazing parts to it. One of them that was quite compelling was when she returns to Rwanda post-genocide of 1994, which is where most of her family were murdered. And she describes, you know, moving through the country um, and being able to appreciate it as a fully with a sense of being a citizen of Rwanda, with a sense of having a Rwandan heritage, which was something that was denied to the Tutsi people for her whole life, her whole childhood, her whole time growing up. She was always afraid. She was always um, called a cockroach. That was one of the terms um, that were um, slurred at Tutsi people. Um, and her life of being one of the members of her family that survived, being one of the members of her family that was able to get an education. And it was really through luck, through um, for good fortune. There was no rhyme or reason to it, why she was spared, why her one of her brothers was spared. Um, you know, it, it, there was no special anything it just happened to be her and so she does talk about about the guilt of that the guilt the guilt of surviving um but it's really it's told in a very not a detached way but in a keeping things to the facts um for instance when she meets her husband and marries him and has her children like that that is not something that's gone into in this memoir and I think that that actually keeps it very concise this is very specifically about her growing up and her family and her neighbors and her village and and what she experienced through being a Tutsi living in Rwanda at this time so it, it goes through different decades different time periods um, shares a bit of the history, but it's not about her personal life and her emotions as much as it is about this very specific part of growing up. Um, so it's very concise that way, and um, it keeps everything on topic. Um, near the end, she does kind of memorialize her the town people that were murdered along with her family and I found the parts where she's memorializing her family members to be um, the most compelling and I think where she's memorializing some of her neighbors um, it wasn't as compelling to me to to know all their names but I understand why it was important for her to record them because she does see um, the notebook in which she has written potentially parts of this memoir but also in which she writes to as a memorial to these people as a as a testament to their existence um and you know when you're talking about something as horrendous as genocide and as um like how to deal with that trauma how to keep moving how to keep living um 
then, you know, that is, that is her way. That is the way that she kept moving and kept, kept people alive is, is through this book. And, uh, yeah, so I do highly recommend it. I think it is, um, extremely important as a testament to, um, her experience of this time period. And yes, it, you know, it, it talks about many atrocities and oppression. Um, and I think it's important for people to understand the, the wide array of, um, systemic oppression that has happened on this earth that humans have inflicted on each other and to um, understand um, that perspective as best as possible so that you know these types of um, societal systemic because this was a systemic genocide that happened through governmental powers um, to make sure that these do not happen again in any country in the world to any other groups of people. I will be back again really soon with another video and I hope you're having a great day.